everyone and welcome to this prenatal sun salutation tutorial class. So when I was pregnant both times with my kids, I wanted to keep up with my yoga practice at home. But as my belly got bigger and bigger, it became harder and harder to do the practice that I once did. And so luckily for me as a teacher and as a prenatal teacher, I knew what to do in order to modify to keep my practice fresh and going, but also to make sure that I stayed safe and that baby stayed safe. So there's a ton of different ways that you can do sun salutations as you're pregnant. And when you're first uh, finding out that you're pregnant and your tummy's still really small, you might stick with just your regular uh, sun salutation. I just wouldn't do the jumping fourth, maybe, right? It's up to you. But as you start to get bigger, or as just kind of your day-to-day -day needs change. I, I went from having a very vigorous practice to wanting something that felt a little easier, a little more soothing because, I mean, heck, you were growing a baby. That's a lot of work, a human being inside of you. So um, we're gonna do a bunch of these little videos so you can kind of hopefully pick and choose a, a morning sun salutation that works for you as your needs change. So this first one would work for any trimester. Um, at any point and it's a really nice way to get in tune with your breath and to move with the breath in the morning but without at all feeling like you're overdoing it or putting baby or yourself at all at risk. So just like you would in uh, traditional sun salutations, we'll, stop at the tar we'll start at the top of the mat in Tadasana or mountain pose. So a lot of times when you're practicing before you're pregnant, you're told to bring your toes together and maybe your heels together are slightly apart. When you're pregnant, you want to give yourself a little bit wider base. Your hips are getting bigger, the belly kind of throws off balance, and so everything's just a little wider. So I would have my feet about two fists or hip bone width apart. Um, same thing, toes those pointing straight forward, heels right behind. You'll inhale, sweep your arms up, and then exhale, depending on how big your tummy is, you'd start to fold forward. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. The biggest thing that you want to think of when you're pregnant is that your baby is kind of in a hammock anytime you fold forward. So you do not want to go into an intense forward fold where the belly is getting compressed. So when you're first starting out though, if the belly's still small, you might even be able to bring the hand down to the ground. Um, as it gets, your tummy gets bigger, blocks might be better, or you can have your hands to the thighs or to the shins. But no matter what, you can kind of see my shirt is acting as the hammock here. It should feel like there's no compression there. But you're still getting a nice hamstring stretch. You're lifting the heart up and forward. As you exhale, bend your knees, bring the hand down to the ground, and you'll step back to plank pose. Plank pose is a really nice place to have some strength when you're practicing pregnant, but without overdoing it. If at any point it feels like too much, drop the knees down, which is what we do next. So as you step back, you hold the plank, maybe for a little bit, see how much strength you have today and how it's feeling. Then on the exhale, you'll drop your knees down to the ground, coming into all fours. And from here, you're just going to do a few rounds or however many feels good of cat cow. Cat cow is super yummy. When you're pregnant, it feels really nice to keep the spine nice and supple and to get some of the weight off the pelvis. So you just move with the breath. As you inhale, you open up into what we call cow pose. So you can kind of see the butts coming up. You're making like this little concave shape in your back, heart's lifting. And then as you exhale, come into cat chin and towards the chest. As your belly grows, you're not going to round near as much um, as you would and you can kind of feel that because again, you just don't want to compress anything here. Once you finish your rounds of cat count, it can be however many you need. It might be one, it might be 26. Uh, you just do what feels good. You're going to come back in to downward facing dog. So down dog is totally cool when you're pregnant. It is harder when you're pregnant, you have more weight. So a couple things you can do is to turn the palms of your hands or your fingers out slightly, and that'll help to reduce some of the pressure on your wrist. Um, you can also walk the hands a little wider apart. Everything, when you're pregnant, it's kind of good to go wider, right? And then instead of having your feet really narrow, 
I gotta take my feet pretty wide. It gives you a little more space in your hamstrings and it gives your belly a little more space too. And if at any point down dog feels like too much, drop the knees down, keep the hips over the knees, walk the hands forward and you can drop into puppy pose and you're still opening the shoulders and then you get the hamstrings when you come into your forward fold anyway. Right, so from down dog, you make the transition back up to the top of your mat. When you're pregnant, I know it's hard. When the belly's bigger, I always kind of take my hands over to the left or right, step one foot wide, so you see I have plenty of room for belly, then kind of bring my hands back through center and step the other foot wide. So you can kind of just play with that. Get yourself back up to the top of the mat, inhale, heart lifts, and then exhale, you'd come into whatever extent a fold is appropriate for you, remembering to make that hammock for the baby. And then you'd inhale, bring the arms back up, and then exhale, hands to heart, and that'd be one round of your sun salutation. So I'm gonna do it one more time, less instruction, more just showing you the flow. Um, hopefully that's really helpful for you. So legs wide, Shavasana. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, folding forward, hands either to the thighs, the shins, or to blocks or if you're not far along to the ground. Extend the heart forward as you inhale. Exhale, bend the knees. Step back to your plank pose. Take an inhale in, maybe a couple extra breaths if you wanna add a little more strength. Exhale, drop the knees down. Inhale, come up into your cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Maybe do a couple more rounds, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, and that same exhale, push back into down dog with your feet plenty wide, hands turned out, take a nice big breath in, stay for the exhale or maybe a couple more, walk your hands a little bit over to one side so you have room to step one leg forward, this is all happening on the inhale, inhale, look forward, Exhale, and you're not really folding in so much, especially as you get further along, but it goes from heart lifting inhale to exhale, now I'm hinging, and I'm still leaving plenty of space for baby. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, hands to heart. And sometimes when I was pregnant, that is what my practice looked like for 20 minutes. And it just felt good because, to be honest, right, in pregnancy, Every day changes so much. So having a practice that was fairly consistent and I knew what I was going to get was really, really satisfying and comforting for me. So I hope that's really helpful. Keep up the work. Some days are gonna be hard. Stick with it and just enjoy this really amazing time with your baby. Namaste, mamas.